Feed forward loops are abundant in biology. In a feed forward loop, an upstream molecule activates a downstream one through two parallel paths. One is direct and the other one is indirect. Feed forward loops are of two types. One is coherent. The motif shown here is a coherent feed forward. X activates Z directly and also through Y. So the sign of control of both the paths are same. This one is incoherent feed forward. The path X to Y to Z is an inhibitory path. But the direct path from X to Z activates Z. Therefore the sign of control of these two paths are opposite or incoherent. Incoherent feed forwards have two interesting properties. They can generate a transient output for a persistent signal and they can work as an adaptive motif. I will discuss these two properties but first the generation of a transient output. Here is an incoherent feed forward with three genes. S is the input signal and Z is the output. I will use a hill function for the induction of X by S. Similarly, I will use another hill function for induction of Y by X. Expression of Z is controlled by both X and Y. X activates and Y inhibits. It is like an AND gate, X and not Y. When X is high and Y is low or absent, Z is expressed. So, I will use a composite function H. It is a product of a hill function and an inverse hill function. When X is high and Y is low, this composite function is very high. But it drops as Y increases. Here is the system of ODEs for our model. I have done a numerical simulation with suitable parameters. Here are the results. Initially, X, Y and Z all three are zero and there is no input signal. At T equal to 10, an input signal S equal to 1 is given. S induces expression of X and X rises rapidly. Y also rises but slowly with a time delay. Z's expression is controlled by both X and Y. Initially, Y was very low, but X is high, so Z increases with time. However, after some time, Y reaches the considerable level and its inhibitory effect starts showing. The rate of expression of Z drops. Eventually, both X and Y reach 1 and the composite function H becomes very small. The rate of expression of Z gets very low and the system reaches a steady state with low Z. The ability to generate a transient response for a sustained input allows an incoherent feed forward to work as an adaptive motive. By adaptive, we mean the ability of a system to respond transiently to a change in the input signal and then return to the earlier steady state. The voltage stabilizer that you use for electronic devices is an adaptive system. A cell also lives in a fluctuating environment. An input signal can change all of a sudden. However, the cell needs to maintain some sort of steady state or homeostasis. An incoherent fit forward can help in that. Let's check out the adaptive behavior of an incoherent fit forward using a model. Here is an incoherent fit forward. It has three set of reversible enzymatic modification. You can imagine XP, YP and ZP as phosphorylated proteins. S is the input, ZP is the output. Here is our system of ODEs. Assume Km3, the michaelis menten constant, is very less than 1 minus YP and YP is also very less than Km4. So we can get rid of our Km3 and Yp in the denominators. By doing a bit of algebra, we get this reduced ODE for Yp. 
Now let's do the steady state analysis for yp. Say dyp dt equal to 0. By rearranging terms, we get yp is equal to axp. A is a constant. Now get the steady state of zp. Say dzp dt equal to 0. Replace yp by axp, the steady state value. Rearrange the terms. If xp is not equal to 0, then the terms inside the bracket is equal to 0. Set that equal to 0. This is similar to what we got for our molecular switch earlier. So the steady state of zp is equal to a function similar to the gold better coastline function. It is a function of k5, k6, km5, km6 and a. So the steady state of zp is independent of s, x and y. As the steady state of zp is independent of the input s, any change in the input will not affect the steady state of zp. So the system is adaptive. But what about the temporal behavior of zp? I have considered some numerical values for parameters and perform phase train analysis. Let's check that. Here are the null clients of zp and yp when s is very low 0.1. The blue one is for zp and the pink one is the null client for yp. The green dot is the steady state. Then S increases to 1. The null clients sit to right, the thick lines. The new steady state is the red dot. Notice the steady state value of YP has changed, but the ZP steady state remained almost the same. So the change in S is not affecting the steady state of ZP. Now draw the vector field for S equal to 1. The brown arrows are showing the direction of time evolution of the system. So if we start at the green dot, the trajectory would be this yellow line. First, ZP will increase and then it will drop to the steady state. So with sudden increase in S, there will be a transient rise of ZP. But then it will fall back to the original steady state. Let's jot down the key points. An incoherent feed forward generates transient response to a sustained input. Incoherent feed forward can act as an adaptive motive. Adaptive network motives provide stability in a fluctuating environment. In fact, adaptive motives are ubiquitous in cell signaling and transcriptional networks. Both negative feedback and an incoherent feed forward loop can act as an adaptive motive. However, we have to remember that the adaptive property depends on the topology or structure of the motif and the parameter values of the motif. That's all for this video. Thank you.